regime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Albright. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation to testify today, and I, I applaud your continuing interest in this, in this um, important threat to our security. AQ Khan was finally busted in 2004 after he'd done a great deal of damage to U.S. and international security. George Tenet described Khan as being at least as dangerous as Osama bin Laden. We would not be that concerned about Iran's nuclear efforts if not for Khan. Iran's gas centrifuge program would have likely floundered without Khan's assistance. Despite his arrest, shutting down the Khan network has by no means brought a halt to nuclear smuggling, even by Pakistan. A key European corporate official said that after Khan's arrest in 2004, he saw no change in the pace of Pakistan's illicit orders for its own nuclear weapons program. Mohammed el Baradei, uh, the Director General of the IAEA has warned that the Khan network is just the tip of the iceberg. There is no reason to believe that illicit nuclear trade in the threat it poses have diminished significantly. The Khan network operated in 30 to 40 countries, according to some estimates, but few of those affected countries have launched any prosecutions of members of the network. Illicit nuclear trade is the scourge at the heart of virtually all efforts by would-be and several de facto nuclear states to build or expand their nuclear arsenals. We must fear Iran, Pakistan, and North Korea because of, of their successes in nuclear smuggling. What makes this smuggling so difficult to stop is that the business is so lucrative for suppliers who rarely worry about getting caught, or if caught, about receiving severe punishments. The Khan Network has highlighted, highlighted the danger posed by transnational nuclear smuggling rings to U.S. international security, yet the conditions that gave rise to the Khan Network and illicit nuclear trade in general have not receded. There remains a global black market in nuclear weapons technology that is larger, more dangerous, and more difficult to stop than is currently understood. Networks similar to the Khan Network may already exist or may emerge in coming years. Several countries continue to conduct illicit nuclear trade. I've already mentioned Pakistan. Iran continues to seek items illicitly overseas for its gas centrifuge program using trading companies or phony companies that arise from a long-standing nationally directed smuggling operation. India pursues a middle way between a legal approach and a full-blown illegal operation in its effort to obtain critical items for its nuclear weapons program, including its gas centrifuge program. North Korea has long pursued items for its own nuclear program illegally and is suspected of acting as an intermediary in procuring key items for the nuclear programs of other states. Concern remains that North Korea may seek to sell off its nuclear expertise, materials, and equipment to others. Khan demonstrated that it is possible for a shady network, shady network of scientists, industrialists, and businessmen to sell turnkey nuclear weapons production facilities. A developing country can save years in its quest for nuclear weapons. In the future, hostile groups in failed states could buy the facilities to make nuclear explosive material and fashion a crude atomic bomb. According to Tenet, in the current marketplace, if you have $100 million, you can be your own nuclear power. I would like to now summarize some of the policy remedies or prescriptions in my testimony. Um, companies are the first line of defense against nuclear smuggling, yet many companies are not doing enough to thwart such sales or alert authorities about suspicious trade. The ethic of greed rather than nonproliferation remains dominant in many companies, and we need to find ways to bolster the ethics of, of companies throughout the world, but particularly in supplier states. Um, in both in Europe and in the United States. In addition, governments and their intelligence agencies need to cooperate more with businesses in figuring out and thwarting the elaborate strategies of smugglers to obtain nuclear and nuclear-related goods. National prosecutions have been reluctant to work together to bring individuals to justice that are part of transnational smuggling rings. International cooperation among prosecutors and law enforcement official, officials is critical in investigating illicit trade, collecting evidence, and convicting smugglers. Yet the prosecution and the key figures of the Khan network have shown that such cooperation occurs far too infrequently. Remarkably, illegally helping outfit a nation with nuclear weapons is not treated as a crime against humanity, 
even though the outcome could be the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of innocent people in a nuclear explosion. Another issue is that responsible countries can control sensitive nuclear information differently. Highlighting this concern at ISIS, we saw firsthand the inadvertent leakage of sensitive gas centrifuge design information from India that would be far better protected in Europe and the United States, and yet could be, this information could be incredibly valuable to those who want to build gas centrifuges. Um, and as far as we know, uh, India still does not protect its information adequately. There is a need to reach an international agreement with key countries about the exact information that needs to be kept secret and the level and type of protection this information requires. In addition, the United States and its allies should expand their efforts to retrieve sensitive information in the hands of illicit trade networks. And although this problem can be quite difficult, and, and we learned with the Con Network that much information is digitized, uh, it still remains important because finally the smugglers treat this information as incredibly valuable and protected and don't want to see it spread. And so if you can retrieve it from parts of the network, it could be that it doesn't spread further. The IA needs a stronger mandate to track illicit nuclear trade. Because of the IA's investigations of Iran, Libya, and the Khan network, it has developed extensive expertise in tracking nuclear smuggling. Because of their concerns about the nuclear black market, the IA has established an, an investigative unit. Its purpose is to develop ways to better detect black marketeers and their customers. If this, if this effort were more effectively integrated into the safeguards program of the IA, it could dramatically increase the chances of detecting and thwarting illicit trade while improving the ability of the IE to detect undeclared nuclear facilities and materials. In conclusion, the arrest of Khans and his lieutenant should have been a call to arms. Instead, the response has been tepid and is in disarray. The lack of action against members of the Khan network shows a lack of commitment to stopping the spread of nuclear weapons. Since the Khan network was exposed, a number of reforms have taken place. But these steps have not confronted the root of the problem. Illicit nuclear trade remains the well-trodden path to nuclear weapons for both today's enemies and allies. Yet few are even aware that this problem exists, let alone committed to, to solving it. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify.